Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming the most long overdue review video of my life. I have been putting off reviewing this palette for months. Like, this came out in what, September? and I'm finally filming this review in November. It has been a crazy couple of months. All these holiday palettes are coming out and bless my little heart, I am trying so hard to keep up. I did think though it would be really fun before the holidays if I filmed a holiday palettes like buying guide. So let me know down in the comments if you guys would be interested in hearing my thoughts on that. I was thinking I could compare some of the different palettes I picked up, indie brands, Sephora brands, all kinds of brands, and then tell you which ones I would pick if I could go back and rebuy or pass or, you know, save up for which palettes I would do those with. So let me know if you guys are interested in a video like that. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Karen Harris. I upload every other day, so you do get quite a bit of content from me. I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel because it helps me out and it helps you out because you get updated every time I upload a new video, which who doesn't want that? Okay guys, so I'm sure you guessed from the intro, I am talking about the Natasha Denona Lila palette today. Now this is definitely a high-end brand. There is no debate. This is one of the most expensive eyeshadow palettes I currently own. And if you are not familiar with the brand, I don't know if you've been hiding under a rock because people have been talking about this for a while. She came out with some really expensive eyeshadow palettes back in the day and she's stuck around. I'm pretty impressed. People seem to really enjoy pick up really expensive palettes. I don't know if we've just become accustomed to it, like we expect palettes to be expensive, but I mean, from her five pan palettes, which are like 45 bucks to 125, and then she has like those 200 and, are they $230 for the big ones? I'm gonna pop some pictures if you've never seen them before. It's insane. She is raking in the dough, I swear. I mean, way to be a girl boss. She is an MUA, and yes, I have purchased from her before, like I mentioned. I do have a video featuring the Sunset palette. I did end up taking that back because I feel like the Yes Please palette is a perfectly good dupe for like one-fourth the price. And I also have one of her five pan palettes that I'm going to try and declutter because it's a hot mess. It's her old formula. It's like crumbly, crackly. I hate it. I can't believe I spent money on it. I hated when I first got it and I hate it now. And I think I have a review of it as well. So I will throw it up in the cards if you guys are interested in hearing my thoughts on those palettes that I previously picked up from her. Now I got mine on Sephora.com, which is great because I am planning on taking this back. Back, and Sephora has a wonderful return policy. I would not buy from her website. I don't like to buy from any brand's website because usually it's such a freaking hassle to return a palette. And when you're charging people ridiculous prices like this, I feel like you should give them the option to return. I personally have not had any dealings like that, but there are a lot of horror stories when it comes to this brand. I'm sure you can YouTube, you'll find so many, so many videos of people talking about really bad experiences with this brand. Anyway, got mine from Sephora. It's also available on Beulish.com, which is a great online retailer out of California if you guys wanna go that route. I like Beautylish because if you buy something over $100, they do allow you to do a payment plan, which is really nice because you can do three payments and that just kind of reduces the blow on your wallet. But if you shop the Sephora and friends and family sale, you can get 20% off. So those are your options. Product launch date was 9-12 of 2017 at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and did arrive in stores on September 15th. I do believe that this is a permanent palette. She did go ahead and make the Sunset palette permanent, so I do think it's nice that she doesn't try to play the whole like limited edition game. She just went ahead and made the Lila palette permanent from what I understand. So if it's different, let me know, but as far as I understand, it is a permanent palette. Cost is $129. I got free shipping because I bought it on Sephora.com. I don't believe there's any discount codes that you can just use on this palette. So you're definitely gonna wanna, if you're gonna wanna pick it up on sale, Rouge sale or the sale in the springtime is when I would pick it up. Packaging is okay. Now I did grab, because I was like, 
ooh, let's compare with some of the more expensive palettes in my collection. I don't have a lot, trust me. This is the second expen most expensive palette. The first most expensive palette in my collection. This is Makeup Forever, 150 bucks. I just bought this during the sale, the VIB Rouge sale. And this thing is awesome. I really like it. Is the packaging worth the price? No, but I think what you're paying for is definitely the product on the inside. They're not trying to be fancy, but this does the job. It protects the face powders and it's very convenient and I think it's going to be really nice to travel with and things like that. So I don't think this is you know something I would say is ooh that definitely looks like it's worth $150 definitely not but when I compare it with this guy which is my Pat McGrath Labs palette now it's a game changer this packaging oh my gosh it is the most luxurious thing I've ever felt it is so heavy so sleek just very nicely made I feel like you can just tell this is quality this is classy I actually have the boxes right here. This is what the outer packaging looks like. And this is what the Natasha Denona outer packaging looks like. Definitely looks cheap. This palette is actually like $4 more than the Pat McGrath Labs palette. Now you are getting more shades in here, but the quality definitely does not compensate for that in my personal opinion. Like this is my standard now for palettes because you guys, I just love these. I have a review on these palettes. I literally comment on every person's profile that's like, are these worth it? Yes, they're worth it. Watch my review video. They're worth it. I love these palettes so, so much. You guys know that's going to be in my holiday recommendations video. Back to the Natasha Denono palette. Compared to the Pat McGrath Labs, I really don't think you're getting a whole lot. This is such weird packaging because there's like this really nice like soft leather, but I feel like you could easily like rip this somehow. I don't know. I just think it, it's just not the greatest packaging. So this palette is made in Italy and you get 0.08 ounces of product in each pan, which is quite a bit of product. Shade selection, there are metallic shades, chroma crystal shades, creamy mattes, and duochrome shades. I do have a swatch video that went up forever ago. I will link it up in the cards for you guys if you are interested. Now, as far as suitability for different skin tones, uh, I mean, I don't think there's like a perfect transition shade for my skin tone. There's no like brow bone highlight. If you like to have that in your palette, there's no really deep smoky shade that's a matte to smoke out the outer V. So, so I feel like this isn't a standalone palette. Not a problem because most of you already have your favorite matte brow bone highlight, your favorite black eyeshadow. So you don't really need every palette to have that. But if that's something you're looking for, this is not the palette for you by any means. I personally am not a fan of cool tone shadows. I don't know why I bought this palette. I'm so mad at myself for just like falling into the hype and buying it because I was like, ooh, let me get that so I can review it for my channel. But it's like, really? You kind of knew you weren't gonna enjoy this palette. I was trying to be like out of the box. <laughs> But it just kind of backfired, so here we are. Now the shelf life on this palette is 24 months, so that's really good. It means it's going to last you a long time. Another little sketchy thing about Natasha Denona is her formula has changed a lot from when she first launched, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a bad thing if you bought a lot of her palettes the first go because I know my five pan palette it has a six month shelf life whereas this one is 24 so obviously the ingredients and the preservatives are very different so that's something to keep an eye on get it keep an eye on now I'm not sure if her brand is vegan or cruelty free let us know in the comments if you guys know so as far as application goes it's really the same complaints I always have these colors just don't speak to me. I don't like her metallics. I just feel like they're chunky monkeys. The mattes are okay, but these colors just muddy on me and just don't stand out on my skin tone at all. It's just not flattering when I wear cool tones because I feel like I do have quite a warm undertone and I just cannot pull these off to save my life. 
So really quick before I do end this video, the other thing I wanted to show you is a little comparison with the Berry Cute palette. Now this is by the brand Colored Rain and they recently launched this palette. So if you're looking to kind of try out cool tones, I feel like go with something like this because $36 versus $125, you're really, you know, kind of cutting yourself some slack as far as the dollars and this palette will go on sale I'm sure because the colored rain does do a lot of sales also I feel like it eases you into the purples because there's still some warm shadows in here so if you're not quite sure you can still kind of like make something else work whereas this one I don't know I just like these bronzy shades I feel like is really pretty but I swear my Pat McGrath Labs duochromes are amazing and they go on like butter these feel very chunky even when I put my fingers in them just to create these swatches they're not soft like the Pat McGrath Labs one so I just want to compare these for you say that there's options don't just feel like you need to buy this humongous palette to get these purple shades I feel like this is perfectly fine for somebody wanting to venture into the cool tone department. I personally feel like this palette is overpriced, so realistically, don't buy both. <laughs> don't buy these at all. And if you have my skin tone, you're a warmer complexion, I don't think this palette is going to be very flattering on you. That's definitely your personal decision, though. If you like to wear cool tones, girl, let your cool tone flag fly. For me, I'm just not into it, and I'm just not into Natasha Denona. So for the 80th time, please just check me if I say I'm going to buy another Natasha Denona palette. Just be like, Karen, stop it. Stop buying Natasha Denona because you hate every single thing she comes out with. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a conscious effort to not buy anything else from her because I'm just disappointed every time. The other thing I do want to mention before I end this video is because so many people are complaining about the price of the Pat McGrath Labs palette, but uh, they don't complain about the price of these. Like, they justify it. Like, it's totally, perfectly fine for Natasha Denona to charge $129. And they say that Natasha Denona is like a celebrity makeup artist, but I swear to God, I've seen Pat McGrath do runways I've seen her like do celebrity makeup just on like her Instagram. Natasha Denona is more like one of those hype man herself kind of people, whereas Pat McGrath like genuinely works on celebrity clients all the time. So just, I mean, that doesn't mean, <laughs> I'm not trying to throw shade. It doesn't mean like Pat McGrath is better than Natasha Denona by any means, like person wise. I just feel like Pat McGrath actually seems like she has actual like makeup experience she is well known in like editorial makeup and doing like runway makeup celebrity makeup like I've seen her work on multiple different platforms whereas Natasha Denona I feel like came out of nowhere which is fine like do your thing girl but I just don't get why people think it's like they can justify this but like I see so many hauls and everyone's like oh, I bought the Natasha Denona palette but like when people whip this out, they're like, oh my gosh, it was so expensive, and I finally bought one. And it's like, girl, bye. <laughs> like, these are good palettes. They're worth every penny you pay for them. They're well made, you can tell. And these are also made in Italy, but I swear the quality is just like unbelievable. Like, even just the weight of this compared to this one, it just feels, this feels like trash compared to how this, how luxurious this feels. And this is actually a cheaper palette than this. Granted, it's only $4, but still, I'm just saying. If you're looking for the best eyeshadows, go with the Pat McGrath, not Natasha Denona. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching it. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, brilliant insights down below. I would be so happy to talk to you guys. Let me know if you picked this palette up. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you kept it. Let me know if you loved it. I love talking to you guys about makeup. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye.